I'm here with Bill Wake, Agile veteran of 15 plus years and a major contributor and thought leader in the space. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Sure. Uh, let's talk about stand-ups and, and the goal of self-organization. I mean, there's this kind of running joke that um, if a team does stand-ups, they're going to say that they're they're doing agile. Um, can you kind of unpack that a little bit and talk about how you really get to that goal of self-organization? Sure. Um, I think, you know, stand-ups are one of those tools that have been around for a while. I think, um, um, I'm not sure if the Scrum community introduced it or who, but, uh, you know, it's uh, it's something to say, like, our team is definitely going to get together and communicate every day about where we are and what we're doing and uh you know if we're starting from some level where we're not talking at all um you know having that daily daily get together is going to be an improvement and going to help us um i think the real thing is is setting up teams where they share the goals and they share the work and you know to the extent they're doing that and and working together throughout the day and so on um the stand-up may not be the most critical aspect of that but you know the real thing of saying you know we we're we're working on things together. I'm not um, over here in my cube with my earphones on, and you're over there in yours. And uh, you know if we want to talk, we'll we'll chat on the the window, even though we could just turn around and talk. Uh, that's uh, that's the kind of environment that that we're really struggling against. That we can't get the the high levels of interaction and and quicker learning if we're just all very separate like that and the assumption that we have no overlap. So any mechanism we can do. So um, I work with teams that, that do pair programming. So two people working together and then, uh, you know, at some point they, they'll talk or swap around and, and throughout the day they're going to hear what it is. Other teams will do the mobbing style where we just put the system on the screen and the whole group looks at it and works together for a while. And they, they all know what's going on at that point. Um, we've got, you know, we've got to have some bubble where the team owns things. And uh, I think that's often the real challenge to say, you know, you're a team that has the capabilities you need and uh, you've got this, this mission of what you're trying to accomplish and I'll trust you to move forward in there. There are things out here that I allow and there are things further out that I don't allow. But, you know, if you're in this space, you own it and uh, uh, you own it from the ideas to the results and let's see it happen. Um, that, that requires a level of trust among the management and everybody else to get. But, you know, if you want teams to self-organize, you've got to provide teams that can do everything they need and then do it. If you atomize things and put them in silos, it's really hard to make that happen. Nobody feels that shared ownership of what we're doing. So we're not likely to self-organize into it. Uh, we want that context. That's great. That's great. That's some very practical advice on the goal of self-organization. Thanks, Bill.